Hey guys, uh, promised you a little bit of shop time. Uh, today we're going to examine um, eccentric wheels and how they're used in industry. Uh, these things um, are on a machine that I built over 20, 21, 21 and a half years ago. And uh, they were uh, just becoming uh, a standard, uh, very prolific in what they do. Um, they were very popular with uh, guys that were automating their shops. Um, so today I'm going to take you for a little tour of a machine that I built and uh, we're going to take it from the top down and show you the importance of eccentric bushings and what they're used for and how they relate to how we use them on our 3D printers and uh, give you a little insight on uh, some of the things that they can do that uh, it's not a well-known thing. A lot of people don't understand exactly how they work and how they work to your advantage. We're going to show you all that today and we're going to go mechanical on you so stay tuned thanks guys okay today i'm going to show you a few things uh, this is a touch screen uh, interface that i have for my router this is a large uh, router that i use to prototype large foam items i do a lot of composite uh, molds and composite work here and this makes makes up to about 23 24 inch uh, high or 24 uh, inches in the Z direction. So um, we're going to just show you a few examples on how eccentric bushings, um, how to adjust your machine with eccentric bushings and the proper use of them. So uh, we're going to start out by turn this thing on. And these are all stepper motors and stepper drives, by the way. Okay, we can load a G-code from here. There's a, a panel that I've got um, loaded from a G-code. You can start and stop. It just sends an M3 to the router, which turns the router off and on uh, uh, when you want to uh, run the machine. It's all automatic once you program it in. Basically like our printers. Uh, pretty old school uh, the way it works, but um, kind of high-tech old school. Um, so we're going to jog this over to the end and I've got eccentric bushings on all of the axes on this and I'm going to show you how they work. So we're going to uh, bear with me. I'm going to go off camera here for a second. We'll get this in position and uh, get the camera do a close-up. Okay, so we're going to jog this thing. Let's jog that up. Jog it over. Shift, speed this up a little bit. Okay, so here's a shot of the uh, end view with the Z fully extended, or nearly fully extended, uh, just about down to the table. And uh, it's easy to see how much leverage you can get on this down here. Now this router has sometimes has a large bit in it and it's cutting some real heavy material. And it has to be really stable down here. So you can see when I'm pushing back and forth on it, it's very stable, it does not move back and forth on there and that's due to we'll go right up here and we'll take a look back in here back in here are the guide wheels there's a guide wheel there there's a guide wheel on the bottom right over here there's one on the other opposite side of that and one right up here and you'll see poking out of this dust shield on here this bolt actually tightens the eccentric bushing down and the wheel is on the other end of that and you'll get a better shot of the wheel right over here this is the wheel out in the open right here and you can see where the wheel has a groove in it and it rides on and it rides on this rail right here it's called uh, Bishop Wisecarver is the company that makes these it's called the rail and they're very uh, used very much in industry and this also has the dust cover on it but you'll see You'll see this outer bushing has a 5 8 inch um, bolt or hex nut on it, and you can turn that. You loosen the inside uh, bolt. This is what holds it down, and you can turn this, and you can make the wheel uh, get further away from the rail or closer to the rail when you turn that, similar to your CR10 or whatever uh, printer. And uh, that's kind of a standard of the industry. 
And not only can you t put tension on that beam, but you can also steer the beam by loosening and tightening and adjusting it at the four corners. And you can actually change the trajectory of the beam, whichever way you want. And that's how to really tune it in. Say, if, say this is your 3D printer, and at the other end of this is a hot end. And if you want to get that hot end perfectly straight, and you have an adjustment on all three, in the case of the CR-10, it has three uh, wheels, three bearings, and it only has one adjustment, which is on the bottom bearing you'll find on your CR-10. But if you had them on all three, you could actually tip and steer that beam. Now we've got a second set of wheels on the next axis. That would be the Z axis on this. And unlike the CR-10, this is called the X axis, that beam running across there normally would be referred to as your X beam on your CR-10. And once again, here's those V rails, one on top and one on the bottom. And we're gonna step right around behind and you'll see four wheels, one up here on this side. And you're gonna just peek underneath there. You can see that shiny wheel right at the tip of my finger there. That's the one on the top wheel. And then underneath you have the two wheels that have the dust covers on them. Those are capturing around these two V rails. Uh, the one up here and the one on the bottom, um, opposite of that. So you've got those two. Those are also adjustable. You can make your adjustment on which way you're tipping your, your axes. And the X axis on this one is the long axis that the gantry runs on and you guessed it there's four more of them this one the one in the back you can see a little more clearly it's a little larger but you can see the eccentric bushing if you look at it straight on you can see where it's larger on this side than this side the way that it's turned it's making contact with the rail I can't I can barely turn this wheel barely sliding and that's how you test the tension on your CR-10 and on this machine you just turn the wheels and you can tell how much uh, friction is on each one of those and you know how much tension or if the tension is even or equal on all four wheels that's going to tell you a lot this particular one is held in place with a pinion that runs on a rack on the bottom it's in the dark there you can see the rack and there's a little pinion wheel that runs you can see it right there that wheel runs along that rack and there's a spring in the foreground right there this spring sorry that spring right there is what holds tension and you've got a turnbuckle right here and this allows you to put more tension on that spring uh, to hold that down so that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it uh, that's what makes this machine be in alignment you can uh, perfectly make this machine in, in alignment with all of those eccentric bushings on here. So I hope that clears it up for everybody. Um, this is a really good example of how industry uses it and uh, uses it to uh, tune your machine in. And there's no reason why you can't do that on your CR-10. Okay, we're in the studio. Uh, let me relate this to uh, what I've already shown you here with, this, uh, with the, the mechanical one that we use. And uh, I know we're maybe a little out of focus in the other room, so I just want to recap here uh, what's happening on the inside right there. When we turn this, you can see the, imagine this being stationary and the, and the wheel is what's turning on this. So you can see we've got about oh, maybe an eighth of an inch of, of adjustment here in this one. Uh, this one is the CR-10, very similar. This is the this is the axle. Now the axle is is stationary in this one. This depends on. I don't want to overcomplicate this, but this depends on having this perfectly sized hole. This is actually 7.2 millimeters right here. And what you're doing when you move that nut, when you turn the nut, you can see it's doing the same thing. You can see the the wide part of this eccentric over here. And as you're turning this nut, it's pushing the wheel over in the hole that this sits into. So we're doing the same basic thing, we're just doing it a little differently. And it's making the wheel 
move. Imagine this part of it being stationary and the wheel is what's causing the movement over here. And I just want to make sure everybody's clear on this. Um, it's a very simple, um, very simple procedure. You can see now if I spin it, you can see it going on around there. Basically the same thing happening here. If I spin this, you can see it going on around. So same thing's happening. Um, it, it's a really logical way to do this. Uh, on the CR10, they they do it where they only where they need to do it, and um, and in fact they uh, really kind of miss the boat a little bit. Uh, it really needs a little bit more adjustment on it. The tolerances aren't that good on it, so you have a, a kind of a problem trying to tighten up some of the wheels. So I'm an advocate for using these on some of the axles um, where we have to adjust um, on both sides of the gantry beams on this. So I hope that clears it up um, and explains how eccentrics are used, how they've been used in industry. Um, they're used on just about everything and um, it really simplifies the adjustment process and makes everything adjustable and you can uh, aim everything where you need to. Okay, we're going to do a little cutaway uh, to CAD here. Uh, this is in 2D CAD. We're going to look at how we adjusted those wheels um, on the screen. This will make it a little easier to illustrate exactly what's happening here. So we're going to bring this wheel in to the rail by adjusting that eccentric. You can see what we're doing there. And we'll take the opposing, you always go to the opposing wheel across from it, and we're going to adjust this in. You can see how you can adjust it either one way to bring it into the rail or you can adjust it the other way. really doesn't make that much difference how you do it. Um, it's important that you put a little bit of preload on those bearings and um, as we're adjusting these uh, you can see the uh, center beam is actually locked in in a, in a perfect vertical um, sense and uh, that's where you can adjust by using these bushings you can actually adjust the trajectory of this on the plate in case your machine is a little bit out of whack one way or the other this is your final adjustment on it so I hope this clears it up with everyone uh, this is a real simple way to illustrate this and uh, we'll uh, look at the CR10 next okay now for a little studio time uh, we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna see how this relates these uh, eccentric bushings relate to your CR10. So we're going to just take a little spin around back here and uh, we're going to look at these um, wheels which are kind of the opposite of the, the V-rail uh, Wise Carver uh, bushings and wheels that we've had over here. You'll see that these wheels are not mounted on eccentric bushings here. There's just an axle that goes through and there's an opposing wheel right over here if you look down here carefully, you'll see this right here. That's your eccentric adjustment. Now, it's not just so simple on here that you can uh, just go ahead and adjust this in because each one of these wheels depends on having a certain amount of, of tension on it. Each one of these wheels should be tensioned separately. Um, and, and once your uh, X beam along here is in alignment, those wheels should all have the same tension on them. So uh, back over to this side. We're looking in here, and unlike the other side, we do not have, you see that? We don't have that eccentric pushing in here. There's really no reason why they shouldn't have it, at least in that inside wheel. You see over here, there's no eccentric pushing here, and uh, none underneath. I've actually looked underneath there already, but uh, these are places where, um, if you think about it, right here, this axle this axle, sorry, this axle and this wheel is so long that you would actually, if you had an eccentric bushing on one side, you'd just be tipping this wheel back and forth or binding the axle or the wheel. You would really need to coordinate two bushings, one on each side, to be turning that at the same time. To, and you could really adjust this wheel in really well if you did that. You'd need one on the bottom also, and you'd need the same thing on this opposing wheel, all of these opposing wheels would get that same treatment. So you got one, two, you got three, four, and the two underneath, five, six, you would need just for this one side. And you would need, this one has the wheels hanging. You don't have the axle going through both sides, so you don't need a bushing here. 
you'd need seven eight to complete this in the CR10. Now looking at the looking at the X car or the cross car on here, we're gonna see. Uh, it's kind of in the way up there. Let's see if we can get a shot at yeah, a close up. And there it is, right there in the middle of the camera. It's a little fuzzy. We're real close to it. Uh, that's an eccentric bushing. I'm gonna come on the other side so you get an idea where that where that is relative to the rest of the wheels. That's up, underneath, right up here, just above my finger, you can just see the top of it right there. There's an eccentric bushing up there. You can see the flats on it. In order to tune, in order to tune the direction of the top of this, so you get your hot end coming straight on down, um, it's pretty set from the factory. If these are machined properly, uh, square, these holes are machined square to the um, center of this, and you tighten up on it, that should give you what you're looking for. That will pull these down flat against this X-beam right here. So there really isn't a need to do it. However, you can put a bushing in here and a bushing in here if you did want to tip or steer uh, the top of the head. And uh, that pretty much is it, except for the bottom. I've had these uh, off already. This is the underside. And you can get a look at the wheels underneath here. You can see there's just the three aluminum bushings in there, along there. And if you look along this side, the opposing side, you have three eccentric bushings. So they've got that covered where you can pull in uh, the bushings on both sides. And there really isn't any need to do any steering on this part of the table. That really wouldn't make any difference. It, uh, if the table didn't run exactly true uh, back and forth, it wouldn't affect the print or affect the performance of the machine. So uh, they pretty much have that covered here. Okay, this next sequence I want to illustrate here is uh, this is the cross car and the X-beam on the CR10. And you'll see I've got three eccentric wheels illustrated there. I'm just going to pull down on the top two um, which would be like a stock position. Uh, these don't have eccentrics on them from the factory and I'll bring up later the importance of why you might want those eccentrics on the top. But we're just going to bring those down into a stock setting. Um, this is your bottom wheel which does have an eccentric on it you've seen in the in the uh, video and we're just going to bring that up and uh, tighten it or tension it to the bottom of the X rail. That's pretty much it. Okay, next you'll see illustrated here, this is about the way that I got my CR10. All three wheels were loose on it. Um, the two wheels to your left uh, have a little bit of tolerance in, in them, just by the way the holes were drilled and the bolt size. So there's a little bit of, I'm going to call it adjustment in there, uh, Kentucky windage adjustment. But um, they really could stand some eccentrics. Uh, this is to illustrate how out of how out of adjustment you can get your beam if you don't do this in the proper sequence. Uh, the inner one having um, the adjustment on it and the outer ones not being in adjustment at all. Um, you also have a, a, a sliding situation where you get a little bit of tension from sliding that whole green bracket that you're seeing in or out just slightly. Uh, once again it's not really an adjustment on there but you can take up the slack in the holes. Uh, so what I did was I tipped that beam in a situation like if you weren't paying attention and you try to adjust your wheels without the beam being level and um, we're just going to take a quick measurement of that over here uh, from end to end and you'll see what a big difference that can make. Just this small wheel adjustment or tension adjustment on those wheels. So this is to illustrate the importance of having this beam level before attempting any of this. So you got 26, 8, 23, 3 on those. Quite a big difference. Now um, we're going to skip to over to um, when we get this we're just going to we're going to go back. We're just undoing a bunch of moves here and we're going to now do it the correct way. We're going to put 
a stick under each side the same length. So I'm going to just draw a line from the bottom up. You're getting this kind of a isometric view because the camera was on an angle relative to the screen. But um, these, th we're just going to copy this line over to the other side. Here's your measurement. Get this copied over to the other side. These would be uh, shims of any kind. I use rolls of tape. There's guys that use one, two, three blocks. If you're a machinist and you've got something laying around, uh, any two very similar or exact uh, spacers. And this is going to reflect how your beam is going to be when you put it into adjustment at the end. So um, we're looking at this inner eccentric wheel here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relax the tension on the outer beam. If I bring that eccentric in first and then push these wheels in, I'm illustrating this with an eccentric movement, but what you can do is loosen the bolts up, the axle bolts on those wheels, and you can bring them into the beam. Um, I use various methods. I've got a clamp assembly that I use for that. And we're just going to go over to the right. We're going to do the same thing over here. And it's important you get these two inner ones against the beam first and that holds them parallel. You don't want to put tension on them yet. You want those two wheels running square up and down that your upper uh, gantry beams. And then you'll bring these other brackets in first. Uh, this is to illustrate where you could use these eccentrics on the outside rather than this uh, Kentucky windage method of clamps and things. So um, I hope this drives at home the importance of using all of these eccentrics. And on the top here, what I'm illustrating is where you can uh, steer that, uh, steer your hot end straight up and down. All right, there you go, guys. Um, I hope this short video kind of drove it home on why it's important to have eccentric bushings on your CR-10 uh, to keep all the axes in adjustment. Um, it's important to keep the bearings uh, tight against the, or I should say firm against the rails to keep everything running true with no slop. But it's especially important if you have them on all bearings, uh, if you have an eccentric bushing on each bearing, you're able to steer or tip your axes to tune it in perfectly straight. We have all the necessary parts on the website. Uh, stop by 3dprintdeform.com, we'll fix you up. And um, I really appreciate you guys coming here, watching the video. Once again, my name is Dave Ashenbrenner, and next time we're gonna go mechanical on you, so thanks for stopping by. Thank you.